It is the weekend of the FA Cup semi-finals and we have got two blockbuster matches at Wembley to look forward to. First of all, it's Arsenal against Manchester City on Saturday. But Colin, let's take a look at Manchester United against Chelsea on Sunday and let's focus on Odeon Igalo. Is it fair to say that since he scored that goal against Norwich in the last round, things haven't really gone according to plan? Well, I wouldn't say so uh, because we'd have to go back and look a little bit at why he came to United in the first place. He came in as a backup striker and he came in at the point where Marcus Rashford was injured and United had a rush of injuries across the board. So he was there to feel to be to be a stopgap and he was it was supposed to end by January. And now everybody is back, everybody is fit, and United are on a run where they're winning games, um, they've gone unbeaten, they're doing quite well. So um, I'm not so sure that you know, it, it's a problem for him. I mean, yes, he would love to play more. I would love to see him play more. But the point is that his position is as a backup striker. And, you know, hopefully uh, he can score, he can come on and score goals. But there really hasn't been that opportunity for him to come on and do the same thing that, he can do, that he's done um, previously. I understand that. But still, since that Norwich game, He's played in three Premier League games. He's got about 10 minutes each one. He's played only about half an hour of football since. For that kind of striker, doesn't he not need to be building games together to be getting a certain rhythm? If he's going to make a success of this move to Manchester United, and I'm sure he's desperate to do that, does he not need a bit more playing time or a little bit more of an opportunity to make an impact, perhaps? Look, if, if you look at what he's done so far, he's made a success of his time at Manchester United. Yes, he could be better. He could turn himself into... Um, a short stop, a short stop legend, so to speak, like um, Henrik Larsson did. But in fairness, you've got to look and think. Look, the guys who are playing, they're doing great. You've got Mason Greenwood playing well and scoring goals. Marcus Rashford playing well and scoring goals in 2021. Um, uh, Anthony Martial is also on what, 21 goals as well. So, and uh, you, you saw what happened the last in, in the game um, over the week when I think the last two games, I think when Martial was pulled off um, for Igalo and. It looked like, you know, he was chomping at the beat. He wanted to he wanted to stay on the pitch. So everybody wants to play. And unfortunately, I would love, I mean, we would all love to see Igalo get more minutes on the pitch um, naturally. But look, it, it's tough, you know. And I, I do believe that maybe because of his success in cup games, he probably will get more minutes on Sunday against um, Chelsea. I suppose that Manchester United dropping those two points late on against Southampton means that the race for the Champions League, plus the fact that Man City now will qualify for the Champions League. So only the top four will get into Europe's Premier Club competition. I guess this means that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will surely have to rotate his striking options a little bit more as he fights on multiple fronts. But do you think Igalo could be a talisman for the Red Devils uh, during their run in the FA Cup? He's got four in his last five in the competition. He's been in great form in the Cups for uh, United. Is he the kind of talisman who can take them into the final and help them lift the silverware. I think so. And when you put everything into perspective, I think whatever happens, the top four places are a bit of a priority. Igalo has a good record in the FA Cup, like you've said. So he might, I mean, you look at social, might think, okay, I mean, what's there to lose? You could start him and then, you know, bring on Martial later on. And Igalo comes on, he scores a goal or two, and he can shoot them to the final. I think he's perfectly suited for the kind of role that United might play against um, Chelsea. And I think that he might just be the one to shoot them to the final. You know Igalo slightly better than I do. Do you think he's the kind of guy who will be uh, completely professional, head down, just doing the best for the team? Or will there be some frustrations there that he isn't playing more, he isn't scoring more at United? <laughs> Look, we've seen Igalo already. Um, he, he's a level-headed guy, he's a professional guy. He doesn't um, rock. He's not a player who's going to rock the boat. So even if he wants to get a bit more minutes on the pitch, he's going to, he's going to respect the manager's decision. You're not going to see him you know, try to make a fuss or anything. Naturally, you, you, you see him, you know he wants to play games. You know? So I do believe that um, he's not going to rock the boat. But if he comes on and gets a chance to, do, um, to help the team, trust me, he'll do it. I personally think it might be in the Europa League when we see the biggest impact of Igalo because obviously United are going to have this end of season competition in a sense. I think a few tired legs and I think that's when the opportunity to unleash this fresh Igalo uh, I think will be a really valuable asset for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, just one word, obviously, this is the FA Cup semi-final this weekend. It's been a quarter of a century since one very famous Nigeria player made such a big impact for Everton in the FA Cup semi-finals. Do you have any memories of that Daniel Anacocci double against uh, 
I forget who it was against. It doesn't really matter. But that fantastic <laughs> double in the semi-final in 1995. Well, look, I think it was just the whole story about what happened at the time where he wasn't supposed to be subbed on. He was asked to warm up and he subbed himself in, came on, you know, and scored twice and took um, Everson to the final. I've had, I've had a chance to speak to Amokachi about that uh, thing a number of times. And, you know, he has this thing about, yeah, that, look, he knew he could make an impact. He knew he could do something. And so he just went on. He thought they had called him to go to, to get on. And he just took himself there. And, you know, the rest is history. We've seen a great Nigerian legacy in the FA Cup, obviously, with, with Kanu, um, also with Obi Mikel, of course, at Chelsea. And I think it would be fantastic for Igalo to walk in the footsteps of those, those great Nigerian players of the last 20, 25 years who have achieved success in the FA Cup. Do any of those victories, any of those triumphs stand out for you? Oh, yeah. So, like, I think the one that stands out to me especially would be Mwan Kano with Portsmouth. Um, it happened at the time when everyone thought he was finished. And, you know, it turned out, laggy as he was, slow, he still managed to get the winning goal and get Portsmouth the, um, the trophy. In fact, as a matter of fact, I was at his place, um, I think, a few years ago. And he had the actual boots that he used for that game. And he's got them on like this little glass um, enclosure. So, and he wouldn't let anyone touch them. But I did. So, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it, it's great. I think, he, I think he valued that trophy, that FA Cup trophy, more than anything else in his career. Because it was at a really, really, um, should I say, interesting time for him. And, you know, that, that's one that he keeps very close to his heart. Yeah, for me about that Kanu success with Portsmouth, I think a lot of the attention during his career went to those Champions League victories, the Eredivisie successes with Ajax, or what he did with Arsenal as a member of the, of the Invincibles, of course. But there was something about that late success with Portsmouth. It was his, his last great achievement in football, I guess you could say. There was something about that final victory that was certainly special. A special team, a very special player, a very special moment. Uh, let's have one final word. Looking ahead to this Manchester United game, one final word on Eric Bailly. Um, he's been linked this week with a move to Valencia on loan next season. Um, do you think he's someone who could enjoy redemption, if you like, or, or really make the most of his season in the FA Cup? Well, possibly. Look, I like Eric Bailly and he's a very, very, um, he's a great defender. He's, it's just his penchant for, um, you know, making these mistakes at the wrong times that's cost him at Manchester United. I, apart from the injuries also as well. I mean, we saw it in the last game where, I mean, there was no need for him to stretch out his hand and stop that ball. And he did and cost United a penalty. So I think these little niggly uh, mistakes are what have cost him uh, so far. Uh, if he does go on loan, I think it gives him a chance to sort of clean up his act and then come back and be a much better defender for United. But I think the FA Cup actually gives him a chance to do that starting now before he has to go out anywhere. Yeah, for me, I think it's a really valuable opportunity for Bailly to prove that he can play a big part at Manchester United next season. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.